the Urban Motorhome channel. Yep. And we decided to nab him and interrogate him <laughs> and ask him a few questions. The first question. Yeah. I hope these aren't too personal. That's all right. You don't know what we're asking yet. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you decide that you wanted to live in a motorhome? Uh, I decided to live in a motorhome when I saw I went to a meetup, uh, like a bushcraft and prepping meetup, and there was a few people there that were uh, I met that were in uh, converted vans, mm -hmm. and they were living full time on the road. So that was the first insight into van life. Which then led me to research it a little bit, and then I went down the avenue and thought, thought about a few things, and I thought, well, why not? Just give it a go. I weren't pushed into it, forced into it situation wise, it was just, I can, so why not? And then gave it a go. So, yeah, just, just decided to jump in. And did you decide right away it was going to be a motorhome, or have you looked at camper vans as well? or? No, I. At first, I started. With, I thought about a really small budget. Um, there was a guy. He was telling me, you know, just do a small converted motor, uh, converted van, just to see how you like it and that. And I was looking down that that road, and then I upped my budget a bit, and then a little bit more. And I was thinking, shall I build my own? And I was thinking, I, I haven't got the skills, tools, or time or location to build my own, and it will probably just be half built, and then I'll be living in it half built. And yeah, I just didn't. It's, if I had six months in a nice place to put it and work on it slowly, I could have done mm -hmm. it. I could have learned how to do it all, but realistically, it was never going to work. So then I looked at motorhomes, and that's when the budget went a little bit more and a little bit more because you know you go up a little bit more, then you get so mm -hmm. much more for your money. So yeah, that's when I settled on a on a on a motorhome. Yeah, brilliant. So I mean, we we've seen channels where people live in a motor in, in a camper van while doing it with all the tools and yeah, it doesn't look comfortable or anything. No, I didn't want to live. Uh, I've seen people like that. Like again, I don't want to. Didn't want to live in the van whilst trying to make it, and then because it would just annoy me that it's not fit, fully finished. Mm. So, so how long have you lived in it for now? Uh, I've just renewed my second year's insurance, so yeah, just two years. Yeah, yeah I think I got got the van, got the motor home, and then moved in after. Um, after about a month of getting it, so yeah, about about two years now, two years within a month or so. So uh, and full time, park ups. What do you do? Do you, do you park on a site? Or? No, no. As as the name says, the urban motor home. I'm just fully in streets and little industrial estates and down the side streets of uh, houses and anywhere anywhere that I can park respectfully and legally, I'll park. You know. Um, do you find any hassle with that? Have you ever no, I've only ever, on or? I've only ever had two knocks on the door one when when i was down in industrial estate and that was a spanish lorry driver asking me to move up so he could fit the lorry in um which was fine and another one i got a knock on the door but i didn't get down from the bed in time and they disappeared <laughs> don't know who that was <laughs> so yeah i never had any any knocks or anything yeah, like that good. it's well, i just pull up and stay in and i'm, mm. I'm home brilliant makes a nice way to live as well <laughs> yes a so, brilliant way of living do you see yourself living in it permanently, long term, or? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I don't think I'm going to change. No. It's, I like the freedom too much, and I've done videos before about why I actually. Uh, I've done a mocking kind of video. It wasn't a mocking video. It was quite. A, it was serious. It was. I love living in a motorhome because I wanted to go for a curry, and but the premises of it was is that I can finish work. I can go park outside a friend's house. I can still get my sleep before my next shift. But then I can also go for a curry with my friends that night before I start my night shift. But if I was living in a fixed location, I couldn't do that because I would be too far away to do the whole sleeping and travelling. So I'm not gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of that mm. that freedom. No, I don't blame you. No. So I don't think I'm gonna uh, change this anytime soon. It suits me on the road mm. to be, you know. And you're time. saving a hell of a lot of money, aren't you? On, yeah, on you rent, save so. a lot of money. You got no, you got no rent. You got no council tax. Mm. You got no major rates and anything like that. You just got your diesel and your gas and your, your food, really, mm. and your insurance and the basic upkeep of a vehicle, which is going to be you're going to have a vehicle anyway to drive yeah. to and from work. So it's a little bit more, but nothing much. So yeah. So these three questions are really quite tied up. What's the least bit? 
about living in the most home that you, you like? The, the thing you like the least? Um, <clears throat> thing I like the least? Uh, I'd say there's probably two things I'd say. First thing is how people really... I, I, don't, I don't care if I get judged at all. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> it's just water off a duck's back. Really is. I do not give a damn. <laughs> they go on with their day. I'm on, 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 on with my day. But how people just really look at it like it's so alien. Yeah. Like you know, they because they've been told you need to live in these four walls of mm. bricks. You know, it's like and so once I tell them, once, as soon as I say there's no council tax, they, they start coming around quite quick. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, they're really people are really quite shocked by it at first. Um, and I'd say the other one is. Which is by design. I've designed it myself, but sometimes it does. You don't ever stop. Mm. You're not. I don't. I don't ever stop. I mean, I'm not on a campsite or anything. So that's by design. But every now and again, you like right now where I'm. I've gone gone to a meet up. I'm going to stop for a couple of days, and that's amazing. Stopping for a couple of days to just recoup, re rest, and just chill out, and not having to find a park up or anything like that. Which I, you know, after a couple of days, I'm then like, right, let's go. Mm. Let's get back on the road. Mm. But yeah, I think that's probably the two, two things really. I mean, I think most homes are looked on differently to camper vans. People think of people in camper vans more as travellers and yes. new age hippies or whatever you want to call them. Yes. But a motor home, it's more adult somehow. Yeah, I, I have had a lot of people look at me because when I'm my hair cut and fully shaved and everything, <laughs> I, I look quite young. And sometimes when I, I used to have a big beard and then when I went and cut it all off, I went into work and they were like, are you all right, little boy? Where are you lost? Are you lost? <laughs> Where's your mum? Because um, I do look quite baby faced when I'm, when I'm, full, when I'm shaving. We, we were shocked when we found out how old you were. <laughs> 95 is. <laughs> so a lot of people, when I get out of the car parks at Tesco's or something, or they see me at a roundabout, they look at the person that's driving the motorhome and they're like, oh. You're, you're too young to have one of yeah, they, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they think it's retirement. Motorhomes is almost retirement time. Mm. Um, that's the the tag that's attached to them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you go around like the like the NEC or something, go around the motorhome and caravan show, it's just people that have got retirement money mm. and they're going to go and buy some 60, 70, 80, 80 grand motorhome. Yeah. Um, you don't get younger people in them, to be fair. No. You don't. I mean, like, you're probably about the youngest person I've seen driving a motorhome or getting out. Yeah, I, or, I don't or... think I've not met any others really. I don't no. think they've got motorhomes. No. They've all got vans or campers. Yeah. I mean, we told a lot of people you were coming and that you were in a motorhome here, and oh, really? they were like, a mo "He's in a motorhome." Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's like you know, he's, he's too young for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and a lot of people think because I'm in a motorhome and I'm I'm doing the urban thing, I'm parking up in the streets. They think I'm going to get so much attention. Yeah. Because, well, it is what it is. People sleep in these motorhomes. Mm. A van can be stealthy and, you know, you don't, no one knows you're in there sometimes. But, yeah, with the with the motorhome, it is built for that by design. Mm. So everyone knows what it's for. But I think because it's so in your face, in plain sight, no one really, no one really says anything. No, that's good. Sorry. I'm going back to the, when I asked about the least thing, what about the worst thing you find about living in it? And the worst thing, you know, I, I always get asked these questions. What is the worst thing? I suppose maybe filling up your water and emptying emptying the tanks. Yeah, that's so, so what. Where do you go for that then? <laughs> I knew he was going to ask that question, <laughs> and that's one I've never really answered. All right, well, keep um, it secret if you want, or quiet if you want, but don't. Um, no, well, I mean, I've got friends that. Uh, you know, let me put it down their drains uh, in like the lift of manholes. Yeah. They're fine. Um, you can put it down a, a public toilet, yeah. um, or go to a campsite and you know either just ask politely or just pack up the quid and just mm. go on and then just throw it down there. Yeah, it's not not a problem. But yeah, you've always got that of you're on a time limit of how long that lasts mm -hmm. um, before it's full or before the tank's empty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, but in the grand scale of things, I mean that's first world problems, isn't it? Really? Oh yeah. It's not. It's not killer. It's not like I haven't got to worry about. And I've got. I've got the le least stress of not thinking about. Oh, where am I going to live? Or if I 
can't if I lose my job I've mm. lost my house because mm. you know? I'm in quite a good job where I can get work all any time and I haven't got the the overheads that, that most people have so mm. worst thing is yeah probably that it's, mm. and having a good job it means that you can save money as well yeah yeah if, I mean if you do decide to yeah and my, I mean, my, I, I still pay bills. I've still got, I've got a bit of debt, and I'm paying off the motorhome and things. Yeah. Because I didn't buy it in full cash. Um. But yeah, my my lifestyle and my job allows me to do to do that mm. what I want to do. So, mm. and I, like I'm a lorry driver. And I love where I work. Um, and I'm not going to change it anytime soon. But if anything did change, that everywhere in the country, and as long as people are buying stuff, they're going to need lorry drivers. Yeah, yeah. and so you can I, move anywhere. And you, I can move anywhere. Yeah. So if, if, if all the work in the south dried up, I can just keep going north until I find work. Yeah. Or if someone says, oh, there's work over here. And even if it wasn't for lorry driving, to work at McDonald's, yeah, I could find somewhere, anywhere in the country to work at McDonald's or a supermarket or anything. Mm. As long as I can park somewhere and drive there, that's it, I'm fine. Yeah. Brilliant. So, I suppose that I was going to... The next one was what's the most difficult thing, but I suppose you've answered that in the you know finding places to fill up and yeah I suppose, yeah um, most difficult would probably be um, yeah like when you go into a new area you're thinking where am I going to park but it gets a lot easier with time yeah now you just you know kind of where where you're going to head to or I mean if you ever look in something to park you can always just they're always labelled industrial estate. You can always find that. You can always start around there because they're built for for big vehicles. They're built for lorries. So there's usually a lot of room. There's not always yellow lines. Um, and then just work your way out. And mm. Yeah, so finding somewhere to, to park. But that, like I say, and I suppose security as well. Mm. Is you do become very attached to the motorhome. I, I don't really leave mine because mm. when I'm at work, it's in the car park. And when... I'm not at work. I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. Apart from like when I go to Tesco and that, but you do become attached. Mm. So like if I go off, like if I go to my family's and I'm going to London for the day or something or a day out, I'm thinking about the motorhome. I'm thinking yeah, it's, it's my house. Well, like, I was you know? it's your house. It's yeah. your sanctuary, and, isn't and, it? And the bottom line is, that, you know, I don't want to advertise but everyone, everyone knows they're plastic windows. If, mm. they, if someone wants to get in, mm. they're going to get in. If mm. someone wants to do something, they're going to no do something. No matter how much security you've got. Yeah, you can have the best security system in the world, but that's still plastic. Mm. You know, mm. it, you can still get in. So, yeah, that that is probably one of the worst things. I'm yeah. just thinking about oh, what, what's going to, if, mm. if something happens. But it's all insured, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so going into your second year, you've lived in it now for over 12 months is there anything in the motorhome that you change layout wise or anything if you could or do you find it all really suits you it, yeah I find this layout really uh, that's one of the things that people ask me is what motorhome should I get and I say the best thing to do the most important thing that you need to do is is layout layout is king because the mechanics can all be fixed or changed you can even get a new engine you know New light bulbs can be changed, everything, but changing the layout inside a motorhome is beyond pricey. It's not worth mm. it because they're built all around. It's like in connect, interconnecting. Everything's built around everything else. So trying to take one thing out would yeah. be... It's not like a van where you can just put a couple of bits of 2 by 4 mm. and start rebuilding things. Um, but this layout, it really works for me because I've got my lounge area. I've, got, I've had this desk put in, so I've got my desk to just you know sit there and do my laptop and that and video editing and things like that and then I've got my nice lounge area so you know I've had I've had f five people in here all sitting around and I've been cooking breakfast whilst they're all on the sofa mm. chilling out watching TV whilst it's been raining outside and yeah. it was at a festival and it was and they weren't small people they were big old you know mm. so it's fine um, and then I've got my bed always made up. I did not want to have to make a bed every day. No, I mean, with a camper van, that's what we found. That's the one yeah. we said when we make it. We wanted a fixed bed. Yeah, I was thinking about ways when I was actually looking at making my own or buying a motorhome. You know, what one do I want? What do I want to get? And I really didn't want to have to make my bed up at all. So that's up there, always ready to go. I can pull up anywhere I need to and just sleep. Yeah. But yeah. It does make a big difference. I mean, if I was buying another one now, if I... This one's perfect because of the size outside, so I can park in normal spaces, give or take, and I can get in through tight areas, not height-wise, but width-wise and length-wise. But if I was buying another one and I wasn't in a normal job, and I was just purely travelling the country, or travelling Europe and that, 
I might buy one with a dinette table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've got the lounge, you've got a dinette, and then you've got your toilet and shower and kitchen and your thing because then I've got a dedicated area to sit down and have dinner. Yeah. Not I mean I've made my area now, it's fine. But yeah, I think that's the only thing I would. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more outside lockers mm. would but then you just carry more crap. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, carry more crap, isn't it? Yeah, and I try and I'm I'm really trying to get rid of a lot of stuff to try and go as minimal as possible. I'm not a minimalist, but I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Yeah, uh, and you've got room in here that if someone does want to stay, you've got a bit yeah. you can make up as well. So. Yeah, I mean this in the summer where where it keeps sitting now is uh, I take these off, and that's a single bed. I make that that's fine for me. I yeah. use that as a single bed because it's too hot. Yeah. Cause I sleep during the day. It's too hot up in the bunk, um, but this does come into a, a double bed as well, if I really yeah. wanted to. So it could be a double bed, but I can't be asked with that. No. I'll just sleep on a single bed for the summer months yeah. when it's, you know. Well, that leads nice, nicely onto the last question, which was, is there one particular? You've done twelve months now. Is there one particular season that you find worst or best? Have you found winter hard or? No, winter's easiest. Right. Winter's easiest. It's easier getting warm than it is getting cold. Yeah. You can always put more layers on. You can put more more pairs of socks, more hats, more gloves. Turn the heating on. Turn the cookers on. You can get warm. It's just a case of turning it all on and waiting for twenty minutes, half an hour. Winter. I, I know I'm not in a van. And I know <coughs> they're a lot thinner, and mm. you know this is built for living in. Um, but even them, I, I wouldn't be cold in them. You can still you can you can get warm. Yeah. But getting cold in the summer. That's a pain, right? Because I mean, I know you did mention you couldn't sleep up the top. Yeah, because because I sleep during the day, so if it's twenty five degrees outside, yeah, it's hotter inside. Because yeah. I have the blinds down, um, I do crack the windows and all that, try and keep creating airflow. And I think one of the best things I bought, apart from my gas bottles, was the roof fan. Yeah, uh, it's a Max Air Deluxe, so it's got like ten speed settings in and out. Mm -hmm. So when I'm cooking, I can just kick it all out. And when it's hot in here, I can pull it all in or kick kick the hot yeah. air out as well. Yeah. That really is like the best thing down from aircon. Mm. Um, but yeah, once you've taken all your clothes off, there's nothing more to take off, and you can't <laughs> you can't get colder than when, when you know we're, we're getting warm. You can put layers on, but once yeah. you've taken all your clothes off, you're down to the skin. There's not much there's more not you can take no, off. No, that's true. So. so yeah, I'd say summer sucks if right. it's really hot, but it's. I suppose last year was exceptionally hot anyway. <laughs> yeah, and I, so I survived hot. it. I survived it. I mean, yeah. and you just you just got to have your fridge full of cold drinks. and It's all about adapting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So. Just have your fridge full of cold yeah. drinks and some ice. I'm actually considering if it's going to be a really hot summer, because I've got the solar system and I've got the 240 and I've got everything, I'm actually considering buying an ice maker. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Buying an ice maker. They can make, I think, 19 kilos of ice a day or something and kick out. Yeah, or six kilo. I don't know what they can kick out a serious amount of tonnage yeah. of ice. So it's all around to yours for a GMC with ice. <laughs> yeah, so I might be uh, because then I might put it in front of a fan, like a bowl of ice yeah. in front of a fan. Yeah, because that, that does work. Yeah. But now I've got the solar and everything set in. I've got fans everywhere. So thank you very much, Darren. No worries. So the name of your channel, if anyone wants to watch, and yeah, subscribe. The is... name of my channel is the Urban Motorhome, and uh, I just live in a motorhome and travel travel around, living in urban urban park ups so have a watch have a subscribe Thanks. hit that bell and if you've got any more questions i'm sure darren won't mind you asking yeah no ask away yeah ask so. away and i'm happy to uh answer any questions thank you very much no worries. Okay. right we'll get the kettle on then <laughs> oh i didn't press that. no you've been a good friend and that's in the thick and thin and i know it's never gonna end